Hello, everybody. Friendly neighborhood calculus teacher. Back with another AP exam review question. We're looking at topic eight. Topic eight is another BC exam only topic. Focuses in on two of the three non-rectangular systems we studied. We studied parametric vectors and polar. This is on parametrics and vectors. And that's pretty much what the questions are on. There's not a whole lot else there. So types of things that you might see that I think are gonna confuse you. First one is the eternal battle of the derivative. So when we talk about parametrics and vectors, we have horizontal and vertical components. Those derivatives don't mean the same thing as the slope. So this is weird, remember, the horizontal and vertical components combine together to form the path. They combine together to form the curve. The slope of the curve is still dy dx. So when you wanna find the slope of the curve, the slope of the path, you're not talking about velocity. You're not talking about acceleration. You're not talking about any of those things. Those are all handled in the components, in the x and y, the horizontal and vertical components. Be really careful with that. Remember that there is a special formula for speed because we can't just take the positive version of the number. We have to do the square root of the sum of the squares of the horizontal and vertical components. And that turns into distance if you integrate it. Notation when you're doing vectors, either the diagonal braces are fine, the ij's are fine. I found that for the most part on the exam, the diagonal brackets tend to be how it's presented most often. And something that's a little bit confusing is sometimes you'll get a position that's using the normal rounded parentheses, and that's just indicating a point. Don't let that confuse you as to whether or not it's a vector. It's like a really fine detail of notation, but because you're at a point rather than a vector, a vector indicates like you're moving this way and this way. A point means here I am. Not really that important. Something else to be mindful of is distance is often presented as arc length. Be really careful with that and vice versa. Anything on motion, speeding up, slowing down, displacement, all of these things, these are all things that we need to be ready for. Pretty much, if you know what you're doing for topic two, what you're doing is expanding that into considering both the horizontal and vertical simultaneously. Without further ado, here's the question I want you to work on. This is a calculated permitted question. I'm gonna assume here that you pause the video. I'm gonna launch into my work and then do, as per usual, the scoring guidelines. Okay, part A, find the position of the particle at t equals three. So I need the horizontal and vertical position, which means I need to work with whatever information I have horizontally, be it acceleration, position, velocity, and vertically acceleration, position, velocity, whatever I have. In this case, I have the velocity equation, the velocity function for the horizontal for x dx dt. If I integrate that from zero to three, it tells me how far I traveled, but I'm interested in the position at three, which means I need to know where I was at x equals zero. That information is given in the point five comma one. So I had those two things together to get the y position at three. I look at the graph. Yes, you might have to consider graphs and tables and equations for parametrics, vectors, and even polar, but polar's topic nine. So moving on to part B, we need to find the slope of the line tangent to the path of the particle. Hopefully my long introduction reminded you that we're talking about dy dx, which in the case here means I need the ratio of dy dt divided by dx dt. If you have forgotten about this, just think about some real quick algebra here. If you were to multiply dy dt by the reciprocal of dx dt, the dt's would make one, they're common factors in the numerator and denominator, and then you'd have dy dx. So the value is 0 0.05. And I got that by evaluating dy dt. Hey, I did that in the last one at three. 
And this time I did have to use the calculator 9956. And then I stored that, got 0.05. All right, part C. Speed, square root of the sum of the squares. This was done exclusively on the calculator. I didn't once even think about trying to do the equation dx dt on anything besides the calculator because this was calculator permitted. dy dt at three, again, is one half. So it's the value I got from the calculator plus one half. Each is squared, summed to take the square root. Accurate to three decimal places, letter D. Your setup is for distance traveled, integrating the speed function, but the speed function for dy dt is awfully complicated. Dx dt is normal, right? Dx dt, we're just integrating the equation kind of like, well, not kind of like that at all. Never mind. We're integrating this. That's no problem. I can do that anytime, any place, so long as I'm on the domain. But for y, we've got this piecewise function. So like what's going on for y here is we've got essentially three functions from zero to one, from one to two, and from two to four. So I'm not worried necessarily about writing equations, but what that means is I can't just integrate y from zero to two or dy dt from zero to two, which is what I actually wanna do. I actually don't wanna do that. I wanna square it, add it to dx dt squared, take the square root of that and then integrate that from zero to two. But I can't because y is two different functions. Since y is two different functions, I have to take that speed integration to get distance or curve length and divide it into two pieces. The first one goes from zero to one and uses this dy dt value, which is down to right one, negative two. And the second one goes from one to two and uses this, which is zero. Again, that is done entirely on the calculator. So I would have the equation for dx dt, which we are given. Square that, I add that to those constant values, those two constant values again right here, one half and here zero. And then I combine those together and I stay accurate to three decimal places. Here come the scoring guidelines. So on the scoring guidelines, you get 1.4, the integral statement. Notice how they switched to x prime of t, that's fine. You could do the x dt like I did. So this integral statement uses the initial condition. So you mentioned someplace that x of three is the integral plus x of zero. That gets you two points. Your third point is getting all the way to here. So evaluating correctly on the calculator and noting from the graph that the slope is negative one half. Or not the slope, the value of the function, excuse me, is negative one half. Letter B, you'll notice they did something different again. They did Y prime and X prime. Same thing though, get here. One point for the entirety. If you just have 0 0.05, that's no point. That's a bold answer, zip zilch zero. For part C, we need the expression for speed. And if I have the correct expression for speed, I'm eligible for the answer point. And then the distance, very, very similar to what, it, what I did. They just wrote in the two different values for dy dt, which I did not write in. Anyway, that brings us to the end of topic eight, parametric and vectors. Thank you very much for your attention.